At first glance, the topics in pure mathematics may not appear to be applicable to the real world. But, just as we see the Fibonacci spiral manifest itself in nature, even the most abstract mathematical ideas inevitably find their way into reality. In this video, I want to show you a topic that recently captivated my attention. Though it may seem simple, I believe it demonstrates how any mathematical idea can show up in seemingly unlikely places. Imagine a ball rolling along a table. Now, choose a single point on the ball and track its position as it rolls. What is created is a cyclical pattern known as a cycloid. Let's consider what would happen if, instead of rolling the ball along a flat table, we rolled it around a larger ball. Like before, we will track the position of a single point on the small ball as it rolls around the circumference of the larger ball. The curve that is created is a flower-like pattern known as an epicycloid. Similarly, if the large ball was hollow on the inside and we let the smaller ball roll along the interior of the larger ball, we get a pattern known as a hypocycloid. Let's look at one more example. Imagine a parabola resting on its side on top of the x-axis. Now, let's track the focus of the parabola as it rolls from left to right. We now see a curve that looks a lot like a parabola, but is in fact an entirely different curve altogether. What we have generated is known as a catenary. It should now be clear what the common factor that relates all of these curves is. To generate each of the curves, we choose two shapes and let one of them roll along the other, at all times tracking some point on or outside of the rolling shape. The class of curves with this property are called roulettes, sharing their name with the popular French casino game. Each of the roulettes I described has important applications and properties. Let's take a look at a few of them. Imagine two points, A and B, with point B lying on the x-axis, and point A located somewhere above and to the left of B. Now imagine that we are an engineer tasked with creating a ramp in such a way that a ball rolling under the influence of gravity along the ramp would take the least amount of time to get from A to B. How would you design the special ramp? It turns out that the best possible ramp design, known as the brachistochrone, is exactly equal to one cusp of the cycloid curve we talked about earlier. Let that sink in. The curve traced by a ball rolling along a table is the same exact curve that connects these two points in the shortest time possible. If you are curious as to why this is the case, I have linked an excellent video by 3 blue one brown which explains two proofs of the brachistochrone cycloid equivalence. Epicycloids and hypocycloids show up frequently in engineering. For instance, two of the most common gearing systems employed today, cycloidal gearing, which is used in creating mechanical clocks, and planetary gearing, which is commonly used in the transmission systems of automobiles, aircraft, and robots, utilize the properties of epicycloids and hypocycloids. Epicycloids often appear as caustics, the shapes that are generated when light is reflected by a curved surface. Common types of caustics include cardioids and nephroids. Using this calculator powered by Desmos, we can see that if the light source is placed on the circular mirror, the caustic generated is a cardioid. If the light source is placed away from the mirror, the caustic generated is a nephroid. Catenaries show up frequently in architecture. Imagine a long metal chain held up by two poles. The shape that this idealized chain acquires as it hangs is roughly equal to a catenary. In addition, catenaries often show up in the design of arches and bridges. Now, how would we go about deriving a formula to generate all possible roulettes? Let f be the complex parametric function representing our fixed curve, and let r be the complex parametric function representing the curve we wish to roll. What this means is that for a given value of t, f will output some point in the complex plane on the fixed curve, and r will output some point in the complex plane on the stationary rolling curve. In addition, let big R be the complex parametric function representing r after it has been rolled for alpha time steps. Now, what does it mean for r to roll around f? Well, any rolling function must satisfy the following properties. 
The rolling curve must be translating and rotating simultaneously and at the same rate. The initial positions of R and F must be the same. There must be at least one tangent point between R and F at all times. The magnitudes of the tangent vectors of big R and F at this point of tangency must be equal. This is because we don't want big R to slip ahead of F or fall behind where big R ought to be. Think of this restriction as saying that the point of tangency between big R and F has a natural inclination to move in a certain direction. If big R's tangent vector has a greater magnitude than F's tangent vector, the tangent point would be pulled more by big R than by F. We want big R and F to exert equal pulling forces on the point of tangency, so the magnitude of the tangents must be equal. The directions of the tangent vectors must also be equal at the point of tangency. This is to ensure that both big R and F are pulling the tangent point in the same direction instead of pushing against each other. Because adding two complex numbers acts as a translation, and multiplying complex numbers acts as a rotation, we can write big R as a product and sum of complex numbers. If you are curious as to why complex numbers behave this way, I have linked an excellent series by Welch Labs which gives a fascinating and comprehensive introduction to this topic. Since the total arc length traveled by the rolling curve must be equal to the total distance traveled, we know that the point of tangency occurs when t equals alpha. We can use this information to solve for the translation term in our formula for big R. Next, we know that the tangent vectors must be equal for both f and big R at the point of tangency. But, since all that matters is that the tangents have equal magnitudes and directions, we can ignore the translation component of big R and treat the function as if it just rotates R. We can use this information to solve for the complex number responsible for rotating the rolling curve. To generate the roulette, we track the position of some point P that is inside, on, or outside of the rolling curve. This point is known as the generator point. Since P rolls with big R, we can replace R with P to get the general roulette formula. We can imagine that P is connected to R by some invisible rod, so that P is, in a sense, a part of R, and rolls with it at all times. While researching this topic, I discovered that if you do not parameterize your R and F curves such that they satisfy the rolling requirements, the roulette formula may still end up working, though perhaps not as you intended. Essentially, the roulette formula can autocorrect your mistakes. This is a fascinating property that I have no explanation for why it occurs. To show you how the generalized roulette formula works, Let's derive the roulette formed by rolling an ellipse along the x-axis. Let our rolling curve be the following ellipse. Since r initially starts at 0, 0, our fixed curve must also start at 0, 0. However, defining f is not as simple as writing f of t equals t. Remember our assumption that the magnitude of tangent vectors must be equal for all values of t? If f of t equals t, we would be violating this assumption. Instead, we will write f of t equals g of t, and find some function g of t that satisfies our assumption. We can also use this formula to generate cycloids, epicycloids, hypocycloids, and catenaries, albeit in a more complicated manner than geometrically deriving each of them. 
Here I have shown the parameterizations of R and F for an epicycloid and for a hypocycloid. I hope that this video has been an interesting introduction to the fascinating world of roulettes. Moreover, I hope that by studying roulettes, some of you will be inspired to delve deeper into pure and recreational mathematics. Mathematics is a complex, elegant, rational, and unusual world filled with all sorts of mysteries waiting to be discovered. But above all, I hope you all come away from this video with the impression that mathematics can be fun. So get creative and roll to your heart's content.